Hi everybody, my name is Jeannie Hopkins and I am going to spend a few minutes to show you the basics about what you need to know about the FDEP. So first we're going to start with all these acronyms, the FDEP and the APPDP. I'm sure you've heard of them and it can be quite overwhelming. So let's dive right in and see what they are. The very first one is our umbrella term. That's the Faculty Development and Evaluation Plan. That's the FDEP. This is a 71-page policy um, that was developed and last edited in 2017, and it outlines what full-time faculty have to do for their performance and professional development plan. Now, um, that is going to depend on whether you're first year full-time, your second or third year, or what's called your senior year, senior years after that. So there's three components to your FDEP, and one is the Annual Performance and Professional Development Plan, otherwise known as the APPDP. And with that comes your demonstration of performance, actually showing that you can um, walk out what you said you're proficient at. And that can be found um, depending on your rank, which is the um, first year, second or third year, or um, senior, that can be found in the FDEP policy manual in Appendix C1 through C3. And that also includes um, and demonstrating your performance on the ePortfolio, which TCC has developed so that we can put all of our stuff there for our deans to and directors to evaluate. Uh, the second part is evaluation, um, where your dean or director evaluates your progress and your proficiency. And the third part is the TCC Reward and Recognition Program. So there's several domains that are assessed. You are assessed by your teaching, and there are several subdomains we're going to look at there, um, with scholarly and creative engagement, with institutional responsibility and service. And we're going to look at each of those a little more in depth um, in this presentation, but then we're going to spend um, up one to four weeks on each of those so you really know what they look like and have some good ideas. All right, so your annual performance and professional development plan is where you create three to five annual objectives, and this is calendar year, not academic year, for continual improvement um, that are aligned with one of the four, one or more of the four domains. So this might be I will attend a New Horizons conference, or I will build a new um, PSY 235 class online. It can be all uh, all kinds of different things. So all four domains are not required because obviously if you only have three annual objectives, you're not going to have four, but it is expected that they'll appear over multi-year appointments. And you will consult with your dean or director um, as to what these are. So it is a um, collaborative thing. Your objectives are one or two sentences that say what you want to do, and it also includes a specific outcome. The plan also includes activities that support achievement, and your objectives can be either performance or development based. So I'll show you an example of what that looks like. Here, the instructor said they would teach students how to utilize Google Drive for their resource notebook in one class and also how to save their work for their portfolio in another class. This falls under the teaching domain and you see they listed one, two, three supporting activities and the measure of success at the bottom talks about how they will measure success of this particular objective. The evaluation is where your dean or director will say you either meet or do not meet expectations. Now your learning objectives can be revised over the course of time. Um, for instance, I one year said I would um, be on a committee, but I joined another committee, so my dean and I just edited the name of the committee to where I still met objectives. Uh, the reward and recognition is, um, let's see, the reward and recognition is where um, Outstanding service can be recognized. Um, faculty members who meet expectations are able to um, participate in this and um, actually 
nominate other faculty members to get awards. Some are um, certificates, some are really nice um, plaques, and some are even monetary. All right, so the timeline, as I said earlier, is a calendar year, so it's December, uh, your ADDP objectives should be established by December 1st of the year prior. Um, and a more detailed calendar will be provided in um, a little bit in the class so you can see exactly what things should be. So if you are in your first year of teaching full-time, your probationary first year, if you're in your second or third year, you're obviously second or third year appointment, and everything after that you are considered a senior. Your classification will determine how you are assessed. This is where Appendix C1, C2, and C3 comes in because each year is determined um, what you will be assessed differently. As you can see, this is how the domains are weighted a little differently for each of the um, classifications on first, second, or third, or senior. All right, so let's talk about the domains. We have four of them. The first one is teaching, and this is creating a learning environment that facilitates students' acquisition of knowledge and skills in a subject. Now, teaching is the only one that actually has four specific components to it. One is instructional design, and that is how you design your course, how you align your course outcomes that come on your syllabus to what you actually teach, to what you actually assess. Instructional delivery is how you, how you actually teach. Do you use active learning? Do you use only lecture? Do you use videos? You know, how are you teaching your students? Instructional effectiveness is how effective are you in teaching? How do you assess your students? Do you assess only using quizzes and tests, or do you give authentic assignments? Um, what do you use for measuring the effectiveness of your instruction? And finally, instructional expertise is where you are showing currency in your academic discipline. So if you're a nurse, how do you stay um, on top of best practices and laws and things that are changing? Same with um, early childhood. How are you staying up with what is changing in the field? Are you reading literature? Are you reading journal articles? Are you going to workshops and so forth? Okay. So moving on, scholarly and creative engagement is activity specially, specifically associated with the faculty members formally recognized area of expertise. So this would be currency in the academic discipline um, and so forth. So what do you do to stay current in your, um, your discipline? Okay, the difference between those two is in teaching it is basically in your discipline that we're looking at. So in instructional, let's go back real quick. In instructional expertise, it is based on um, what do you do to stay current in your discipline, whether it's nursing or communications or psychology or early childhood, whereas scholarly and creative um, engagement is specifically associated with your area of expertise in teaching, you know, so this could be going to present at workshops or earn college credits or participating in professional organizations or um, attending trainings, anything like that. So that's the difference between the two. The third domain is institutional responsibility. And these are presumed duties that you are to do, um, such as um, providing a table at an open house, or advising, or committee work, or engaging with um, high schools to come into your program. Um, these activities support and advance both the mission of VCCS and also the college um, functioning. So service is participation and commitment to students um, and their organizations, but these are not done for extra pay. They're just done as a professional educator. So these can be like visits to high schools to talk. These can be um, sponsoring student organizations or um, leading camps that we have or community service. Um, so again, we will go through each of these in way more detail in one to four weeks each. So I'm just giving you an overview right now. Um, documentation um, is according to your specific APB or APB. 
typo there, APP, ADD, P, PD, um, depending on C1 through C3, you'll need to provide concrete evidence for some items. So we'll look at the next one to give you an idea of what kind of concrete evidence. Um, usage of the ePortfolio is encouraged and very easy to use. We will um, go over that during week 10, how to use it, and what to put on it, but you can also do a paper portfolio as an additional option. Um, so I know this is hard to see, but this is an example of documentation for institutional responsibility for senior faculty. And you notice all the things in bold you do not have to um, document. But um, if you look right underneath the non-bold stuff, you'll see it says actively collaborate with other faculty and enhancing instructional effectiveness and student success um, at a college. So one thing I know I could put up there is I worked with another instructor um, at a different campus to come up with several different um, assignments that we both use for our students. So I would put that assignment up there because I was collaborating with other faculty. Um, it might be, if you look further down, um, actively participate on a committee. So that could be a search committee. That could be a governance committee. You know, so I might put the minutes of a committee that I'm on with my name and attendance on there. Um, so these are things that you will do for your observation. I mean, I'm sorry, for your documentation. So classroom observation, the frequency is done depending on, again, your classification. So for first year, you get one classroom observation in the fall and one in the spring. For your, um, your second and third, you get once per year. And for senior faculty, you actually get once um, during the final three semesters of your multi-year appointment. So it's over a couple years you get one. Now, if you teach online and face-to-face, -face, both of those are assessed. So you will actually provide um, access to your dean or director, and they will um, assess your online class as well. All right, so the process involves a dean or director. You're going to plan this together at least 10 work days prior. So you're going to have a pre-observation meeting. You're going to about talk about what you're going to go over. You're going to have um, the observation where your dean or director, director is actually in your classroom during your class, and then a post-observation conference. So you're actually going to have some written feedback based on this. Um, and again, we will go through uh, this more in detail in week nine. So rewards and recognition. This is where I talked about a little earlier, um, where you could be nominated by a faculty member as long as it's not in the first year that have overall summative evaluative ratings of meet expectations, and they must be current in everything with their APPDP. Um, they can be given awards in one of the four service domain areas. And so it's really neat. Um, to be, uh, it's really neat to be recognized for all this. So that is the basics of the FDEP, what the FDEP is, and we're going to go into detail um, as we keep moving forward. I hope you learned a lot.